Welcome to video number three in the series of the ultimate artificial intelligence operating system where we build the ultimate AI OS running on Linux Mint 22, AKA Wilma. We're gonna jam pack this thing with everything from deep fakes and face swaps to large language models that you might know as ChatGPT, image generation with stable diffusion, and we're gonna throw in a few more things just to mix it up a little bit here. Now, if you haven't seen the first couple videos in the playlist, I highly recommend you checking those out. You can literally follow along step by step. Everything I show you is absolutely free, and you don't even need a GPU to run any of this stuff. So you should be able to pull this off on just about any modern hardware. Okay guys, so today we're gonna to take a look at the LLM or Large Language Model Interfaces, AKA the LLM front ends. Now, what the heck is that? Well, you've probably heard of ChatGPT by now. You open up a website or maybe you have the fat client installed and you can start a chat with a large language model. Back and forth, it gives you some really good answers. It's very intelligent. Well, today we're gonna to step that up a notch. We're gonna install an open source front end where we can install multiple LLMs and go back and forth between some of the most powerful open source large language models absolutely free and we'll have it all in a single pane of glass. Now another thing I like about these front ends is that they have an API where we can hook into closed source large language models and we can also open up our own API so that we can tap into this LLM front end from our own custom applications. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but for now, let's go ahead and get this thing installed. Now you have several choices when it comes to these LLM front ends. You have things like LM Studio, one of the more popular ones out there right now. However, that's closed source. For this project, I'm really trying to keep it as open source as possible. So that narrows it down to a few choices. I'd say the most popular ones out there are probably Olama, and then Jan.ai, we're gonna be using Jan.ai today. There's also another one, GPT for all, uh, but you really can't go, long, go wrong, excuse me, with Olama or Jan AI. But again, today we're using Jan AI. It's very solid, open source, and has a lot of cool features. So let's head over to that website. We'll pull down the package and let's get this thing installed. All right, fire up a browser and go over to Jan.ai. Pretty straightforward URL for you. Okay, now this should automatically detect your OS. So mine is Linux and we're gonna go ahead and pull down that app image. Only take a second here to download. Once that is done, click on show in folder because we actually wanna move this. So let's right click and cut out of the downloads folder. We wanna keep things nice and tidy here. If you're following along, you know we created an AI folder. So let's go ahead and create a new folder in that AI folder and call it Jan. Now paste in the file that you cut and then right click, go to properties. We need to set permissions to allow executing the file as a program. Once you do that, hit close. We can close out the browser now. Go ahead and double click on Jan AI. It'll take a second and it should launch right up there. We should see a nice little interface. There it is. All right, so right now we don't have any models yet. So we're gonna explore the hub. Now everything in green, this is what I like about Jan AI. It shows you what will run good on your system and what would not. So the ones here that say use, you don't have to download those. You basically just need a API key and you can use those for, not for free. You'd have to pay for the uh, API interactions for the ones that are closed source, like uh, ChatGPT for instance. So I'm gonna download Llama 3. This is the 8BQ4 and Mistral Instruct 7BQ4. Those are recommended for my system. We do see like code straw would work. It just might be a little bit slow on our system. And you can always, you know, increase your memory and things like that to support more. But you see Command R, it just doesn't have enough RAM. And I believe I have 16 gigs of RAM on this system. Yes, I do. So some of these are pretty resource hungry but others are light. Um, and for the most part, if you are if you have 16 gigs, if you have eight, you can run a lot of these, maybe a little slower, but if you have 16, you should be well on your way to run these. But again, even if you only have something like eight, it'll just be a little bit slower, but it'll still work. So there are quite a few that are baked right into Jan.ai and they do release new ones all the time. But note at the top here where you see search or paste Hugging Face URL, you can import additional models from Hugging Face. Just know that they have to have the supported format of GGUF. A lot of them on there do not. I am currently working on a way to convert them. Haven't had a lot of success yet, but most of them are like safe tensor format and I'm working on a conversion utility to get those over to GGUF. Perhaps more to come in the series later on on that one. Okay, these are large downloads. You see the ones I'm downloading right now are over four gigabytes. So we're gonna fast forward the video and we'll come back when that's done and test these out. All 
right, that took so long, the screen actually timed out there. <laughs> kind of expected that. So let me get logged back in. Yes, and they are done. They no longer say download on the top two. They now say use. So we have Llama 3 and we have Mistral Instruct 7. So let's do a demo with Mistral Instruct 7B Q4. And let's just ask it a very simple question here. How can I build a doghouse with lumber and shingles? And then we'll hit the little arrow there and note the first time in the chat it has to start the model doesn't take very long but now you see it is generating the response so let's see what it comes up with All right, I won't read through all that, but as you see, that's a very detailed answer there. Talks about things like the slope of the roof, tells you what to take into account. A lot of good information there. Let me know if you guys want to see an entire separate video on different prompts and things like that using Jan AI or any additional models that you'd like to uh, see me test out. This was a introduction on how to get Jan AI installed and what it does. And that's awesome but I don't want to have to go into that AI folder every single time I launch it. So let's create another desktop icon, crack open that terminal, and we're going to do just what we did in the Roop Unleash video. So let's CD into our AI Jan directory, which is where we put it. And now let's create a bash script for launching Jan AI. All right, so we can use nano to both create the new file and modify it all in one file command there. So we did nano run jan.sh. And the first line we'll put here is CD space, and then we'll go to the directory where Jan lives. Next thing we're gonna do is do a dot forward slash Jan dash Linux dash x86. This is the name of the file, by the way, guys. Underscore 64 dash 0.5.2 dot app image. So that is the app image file that we downloaded. That's the one that we're double clicking to get Jan to run. Control O to write that out. Control X to exit. But we did forget a line here. I know you guys caught that because you're so smart. We're creating a bash file. So we always got to have that specific line at the very top there. So hashtag exclamation point forward slash bin forward slash bash. Just lets the system know this is a bash script. If you guys have been following along, you know another must do with any bash script is adding the executable permissions. So chmod space plus x and then space the name of the shell script, in our case, run underscore jan dot sh. So now this shell file or bash script is executable. So we can test that out and give it a second. This should launch the jan interface for us. Checking for update and there it is, you have the UI. So that's pretty cool, but we need to do one more thing and that is create the desktop icon. So we can just double click and launch that puppy right from the desktop. So back to the terminal here, we'll do a clear command just to clean things up. All right, now let's use nano to go ahead and create that desktop entry, which is the icon. So we'll do nano space and a tilde there. That's that little squiggly line that'll bring you to the home directory. So home IT unicorn and then forward slash desktop forward slash jan dot desktop, which is the name of the desktop file that we're creating. If you follow along, you know that you have to have some specific entries in these files as well. So top line is square brackets, desktop entry, name equals, that's whatever you want to call it. That's what will show up on the icon itself. All right, the next line is exec, which is basically execute. This is very important. So exec equals, and we really didn't need the bash script in this case. I just want to walk you guys through how to do this with any type of a file. Uh, but we're going to point it to the actual app image, which is executable by itself. So again, the bash file was kind of just a practice run in this case, but all good practice makes permanent, right? All right, so we'll point it all the way to that app image file. You got to tell it the full path. That's basically what it's going to execute when you double click it. And then we'll say icon equals, in this case, applications dash other. And again, we're going to change this later. That's kind of a placeholder. In a video later in the series, I'm going to show you how to put custom icons in there. Type equals application. Terminal equals false. We don't need a terminal, but we got to have that lowercase. There we go. All right, save your work. Hit Control O to write it out. Hit Enter, verify the name there. Control X to exit out of the nano editor. Okay, now with just like with the bash script, we have to do a chmod plus X to make this desktop file executable. So we'll do chmod plus x tilde forward slash desktop forward slash jan dot desktop. 
And note that the icon on the desktop shows up with the name defined within that jan.desktop file. Now, like any good system engineer, let's go ahead and test our work. Get rid of that terminal, double click your icon, and give this just a few seconds here, and we should see the beautiful Jan AI user interface pop right up. And there it is, guys. That is how you install Jan AI and create yourself a very handy desktop icon. Again, let me know if you want to see more on Jan AI. Like I said, we can explore the interfaces both ways, that is. We can uh, call to an external closed source large language model using the APIs. And then we can also open up an API of Jan AI and call that from one of our own custom applications. I'll give you a quick example, try not to ramble too much here, but I am working on a Halloween animatronic. And I thought it would be kind of fun if it can have uh, vision so it can see the people that are walking up and then maybe note that this is a witch. And then I could feed that information back to the Jan AI API and start a conversation or say something funny about a witch just in that specific example. Let me know what you guys think, whether it's that Halloween example or just an example in general, if you want to see the Jan AI API or any more information on Jan AI doing specific things. But just with the bit of knowledge that you guys now have of using these LLM interfaces or front ends, you have the power to run a whole bunch of local LLMs. A lot of these are uncensored, unfiltered, so you're not going to get blocked. They're not going to give you crap about asking questions about anything. Obviously, be sensible. Don't do anything stupid. But it is unfiltered in a lot of cases, and it's free, and you're not sending any data. So from a privacy perspective, these beat the heck out of ChatGPT nine days out of seven. All right, guys, let me know what you think. Make sure you subscribe because I've got more coming in this series on creating that ultimate artificial intelligence local operating system on Linux Mint 22, Wilma. All right, guys, have a great day. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and sub. Till the next one, everybody take care.